Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Bob Frazier. Thanks for being on the show again, Bob. All right. It's good to be back. Yeah, we're glad to have you back. And, and just because Bob's vast experience and, and just uh, his expertise in this business, uh, we just wanted to come have him back on the show. Uh, we could have him back numerous days, that's for sure. Uh, and he can just elaborate and help us on so many topics. But something that's very uh, important to all of us right now is just uh, just what's happening in the economy. And I want to get his take on that. And But I want to remind the listeners uh, about show WS496 came out February the 29th. And also, show 526, uh, which was just uh, March 30th. So uh, I would encourage you to go back and listen to those with Bob and uh, where you can learn more about him and his background. And But a little about him, he's on a mission to help investors take advantage of one of the most effective and overlooked avenues of real estate investing. As residential mortgage notes, as founder and principal of Aspen Funds, Bob has purchased more than 1,000 mortgage notes, earning double-digit annual returns without the risk and volatility of traditional investing options. Bob, thank you again. Always grateful to have you on. Um, you know, any updates, you know, for the, for the listeners before we jump in? Well, you know, um, this is a syndication show, right? So we're all syndicators. We're all out there in the markets. Well, so I probably have as much experience as anybody raising money. And, uh, and interesting enough, see, I, I raised $44 million in the, in the uh, dot-com era. And, and I watched, and I was, I was kind of a young buck, you know, or a middle-aged buck, I guess, you know, um, watching this market crash and going, wow, look at that, you know, and not thinking much of it until all of a sudden it dried up my funding. And I, I you know, and so, so what I learned through that process and what we're experiencing now with this, with this current, you know, virus crisis is that all the money is all tied together. It's all tied together. Even though it's different sources of money, it's all tied together. And when, the, when there's a lot of fear out there, the money evaporates. And, and I watched literally where, you know, we literally, the, for the third round of financing, we went out to raise 25 million. It blew up to 45. We couldn't stop it and kind of squeezed it down to 35 million, you know, by beating our investors up and telling them, no, we're only going to let you put in so much money. Okay. Well, literally six months later, we couldn't raise 10 million at any valuation, you know, and nothing was different in our business. It was just the emotions, you know, here's, here's the truth about raising money. It, it is investors are very emotional and very fad based. And that includes institutional investors. Okay. In fact, they're the, they're just, they're the worst offenders. You know, the v VCs all run in herds, you know, <clears throat> all the, all, all, everybody runs in herds. The banks run for shelter. You know, <clears throat> someone said the banks are like umbrella salesmen that all disappear as soon as it starts raining, you know, and, uh, you know, I thought that's pretty good. So, so we're in the middle of a crisis. And if you're, you know, if you're out there raising, you know, it's, it's going to be a, a very different, different world. So, yeah, and that's, it's such great to hear that from your experience too. And I mean, 44 million, and then you couldn't raise 10 million. I mean, that's, that's drastic. If somebody's in the middle of a deal right now. That's, that's a nightmare. Right. So, but what's interesting. So we're, we're actively raising for some of our, some of our big note funds, and because we're perceived as counter cyclical, literally we have some big institutional investors looking at us and very excited about moving forward, you know, because we're counter cyclical or, or perceived that way. And, and what, what does that mean exactly? So it means when everything else is going down, we're generally unaffected and, um, and or, or we're actually helped by that. Um, and uh, so that's, so, you know, this real estate is typically cyclical, right? It goes with the business cycle and the credit cycle, but my business is counter cyclical. It goes anti-credit cycle. We do better when things are worse in, in, in one sense. So, so, so it's very interesting if you can actually show that, that you, if you can weather the storm and come out and show that you actually protected your investors and you actually made money while the stock market is dumping, you can come out of this, smelling very, very, very good. 
<clears throat> Makes so much sense. Uh, if you can, if you can weather this storm and still make your investors money through through this downturn, you're that, going to develop right. a lot, a lot more relationships. <clears throat> that's right. So I wanted to talk a little bit about just the the general economy. So um, everybody's aware, of course, the stimulus packages has passed, and some of the challenges that are that are happening. You know, most of the analysts that I'm reading, um, you know the the medical guys, the medical analysts are, are predicting, you know, uh, another two weeks before a peak, a two, you know, two to three weeks, say, of a, before the peak in the infection rates and, 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 and death rates. Um, so hopefully we'll start to see a reprieve. Of course, what's, what's, the hard, what's harder hitting than just the virus is the, the, the economic impact from the basically shutdown of the economy. So 70% of the economy is consumer spending, 70. So with consumers sitting home, um, it means, you know, the economy is evaporating and uh, it's affecting everybody. Um, so here's, here's the latest numbers from Goldman Sachs, uh, Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan. Basically, Goldman was predicting a 24% decline in GDP. GDP is gross domestic product. It's actually the, su the sum of the economy of the United States. And a 24% drop, which, you know, maybe somebody that doesn't sound like a lot, but that is absolutely humongous and it's unprecedented. Um, now that's a big number. Bank of America is predicting a 12% drop. Morgan Stanley, a 30% drop. JP Morgan, 14. So let's say it's between, you know, 10 and 25%. You know, and I think it's probably going to be up towards the bigger numbers. Um, well, that is massive, massive. And literally, it is depression inducing. Um, there's not a big question about that. Okay, but here's, here's the other, you know, and, and, and thankfully, our leaders, and thankfully, we have some business people in the mix, you know, and I'll, I'll give a shout out to Trump and I'll give a shout out to uh, Marco Rubio, who was instrumental in putting together this bailout package. Well, they, they didn't waste, you know, no moss grew under their, their feet when they, they did this, they got right on it. And, and, you know, so surprisingly, we got a uh, bipartisan bill. I mean, you know, that's, that is worth a hallelujah right there, you know? Um, so they did this thing and it's super fast and it's super big. So, you know, three, three trillion, I mean, 2.1, if you look at this, the, the last one they did plus a trillion before that. And it's really more unlimited because the Federal Reserve is involved and they're basically are buying bonds. So it, it really is, it has even more upside than that. And I'm, I'm a, I, I kind of have a gut feel they're going to do us another one, but but even if it's just three trillion, well, during the 2008 crisis, they, the bailout package was a total, they ended up buying about 3.7 trillion, about $4 trillion worth of bonds right then. So it's equivalent. And uh, that is a very significant deal. And the stock market, of course, has rallied on the news as it should. Um, they're really spending the money. Well, what that will do is hopefully cause a V-shaped recovery. So boom, market. Drastic down, drastically right back up. Yeah. So Goldman, who's predicting a 24% drop in Q2, is predicting a 12% rise in Q3. So it is a V. Um, and, uh, you know, so there's a- That's really fast. Really fast. So a lot of the analysts are predicting a V. Some of them are predicting more of a U, but, but really I think the general consensus is it's gonna be a fairly fast recovery. And the reason is one, the stimulus package is a real winner. Um, you know, there's always room for improvement, but they did something super big and super fast, uh, pretty, pretty quickly. And uh, one of the things that I find so surprising is they have the payroll protection uh, piece of that 300 and, you know, 50 odd billion to businesses. So one of the things that seems like our past leaders didn't understand and why we had a super slow recovery in 2009, 10, 11, 12, with Obama as, as president, well, he didn't understand business. The truth is jobs are created by businesses, right? If you want jobs, <laughs> you better help businesses. If businesses Seems are dead, simple, right? If businesses are dead, no one's gonna get hired. And so what they did is they gave the money to businesses to retain and rehire people. So instead of a person out of a job having to find a new job, they can simply go back to where they were. And uh, 
So it's brilliant. And Marco Rubio did pulled off that thing and just super, you know, honestly, we got to, we got to, you know, just high five our, our government, you know, most of us just are so frustrated with the government, but anyhow, they did a good job on this and uh, it's going to make a difference. It's going to bounce back and see, there was really no underlying problem. There's no systemic problem with the economy. It was booming low, low unemployment rate, you know, um, low interest rates, you know, great earnings. I mean, it, it really was very solid. There was no, the economy wasn't sick when it entered into this. So this is not an internal shock. It's an external shock, which is different, right? So I am hopeful that we will see a V-shaped recovery. You know, ultimately we could see part two, you know, when in the fall, even if the virus gets beat back, it coming back until really it's going to be an issue until we get the, the, uh, the vaccine, which is, you know, they're saying a year plus. So bottom line, the economy, you know, uh, everyone should uh, be business owners. If you're a business owner, you should, you, you know, contact your bank and get a, get this, uh, get this bailout package. Um, I think pretty much many, a lot of these small businesses will be able to, to, uh, to uh, apply for this. It covers, you know, even gig workers, small business owners, self-employed, so it's a very good deal. And it's, yeah, I've heard even self-employed, I mean, can, yeah. can apply for this as yeah, well. That's right. And the, they're already starting. I just got a message from my bank today saying they're, you know, they're, and the underwriting for this loan, it's a loan that's forgivable. It's literally bring your payroll records, you know, and this, you don't have to sign, you don't have to do a personal guarantee, um, you know, or anything. So it's definitely not a normal bank loan, you know. And it's forgivable. So, so get out there and uh, and get it get it done. You know. Mean, meanwhile, so the, the larger economy, you know, uh, hopefully will will bounce back. And if people have money in their pocket, they generally will. Um, so I think consume people are going to go out to eat. They're going to go buy stuff. They're going to go get that car. They're going to you know. Yeah. So I, my guess is we will see a V shape recovery. Um, the uh, you know. How does it affect the real estate market? A lot of us are in, in real estate. So I've spent a fair amount of time kind of looking at these, uh, at the numbers in real estate. And uh, so prior, prior to, the, to this shock in the residential market, which is my market, you saw pretty much massive, massively positive fundamentals from my point of view. And that includes price to rent ratios. It, in, it includes, um, affordability. Um, it includes, uh, you know, massive being a, the, the housing market, single family homes being massively underbuilt for the last 15 years. And it's just a massive shortage of supply relative to population and demand. And it's, it's really systemic. So we, you know, we were literally setting a 13 year record in home sales in February before the crash. So bottom line, nothing is that has changed, right? The rents have, are still going up. People still need a home. So I, I don't believe we're going to see um, much, if any, downturn in residential, residential real estate prices. Add to the fact that part of the bailout program is the federal government, again, buying, buying mortgages. So they're buying these MBSs. So they're going to drive interest rates, you know, 30-year fixed rates to the toilet. Um, you know, I was just watching Kyle Bass, who's a big hedge fund manager, saying he thinks we're going to see 0% 30-year fixed mortgages. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if I'd go that far, but holy smokes. What if, what if there is a 1% fixed mortgage? You know, what's going to happen? Well, you're going to see an unbelievable refinance boom, um, which puts money in people's pockets, and you're going to see prices go up. So um, the commercial is a little more of a mixed bag. Uh, you know, there's obviously, I think the world's going to change in regard to hotels and, uh, and entertainment properties and possibly office space, um, partially, um, and certainly retail. Those, those areas are going to be negatively impacted for potentially a while. Um, now, let me say this about that, though. You know, if you're in that space, maybe it sucks. But if you want to be in that space, you've got some dry powder, it might be really good, right? So, uh, good time to buy. Good time to buy. So it's always if you can if you can convince your investors to move, if you convince them, you got a you got a good deal and uh, time to buy. You know, I one of you know what I know a guy who made all of his money buying uh, buying at the previous crash buying hotel properties, 
and they're going to be on the cheap right now. And are, are, is, there, is there something fundamentally wrong with hotels? No, it's just a shock. So it's a good chance for if you know that space and you like it to potentially buy, buy some properties on the cheap. So it's not all bad. Now, the other, other parts of commercial, you know, uh, storage units, you know, office space, um, you, know, uh, you know, residential, you know, uh, multifamily, I don't think there's going to be much impact at all. And in fact, the cap rates might actually, we might see cap rate compression, believe it or not. And mm -hmm. why is that? Well, again, low interest rates. So what's happening with this wash of money, you've got, you've got trillions and trillions of dollars in cash entering the system. And when you do that, and, and money is global, right? This is one of the things where, where, you know, I think it's helped me be accurate in my forecast as I look at global money. And um, you look at what's happening in Europe with negative interest rates. If you're a pension fund in Europe and you've got billions of dollars and, and a bank wants to charge you interest to keep the money at, at their bank, what are you going to do? You're going to pay your bank a few million dollars a year in interest? No, you're going to go put that money to work. Where are you going to put it to work? Well, anywhere, right? Um, but you can go buy a currency swap and go put, invest that money in America with a currency hedge and go buy multifamily and get a two and a half percent cap or a two percent cap and you'll feel really rich you know yeah so that money is going to flow it's going to flow to america america is still an incredible investment destination worldwide where are you going to invest you know wuhan you know um you know it's just a fantastic destination we have some of the best companies the best real estate best financial plumbing and infrastructure in the world um so money is going to end up in america it's going to get to keep prices up. So again, I'm very bullish in real estate. You know, there's some sectors are going to get, get creamed, but that's a good opportunity as well. You, you mentioned a, a earlier, a, a very quick recovery. You even mentioned like by the third quarter. Um, do you, th yeah. you think it'd be that fast? Well, that's what the banks are predicting. You know, they're, they're, they're smarter than I am. They look at the, do the bottom up analysis. I mean, it really depends on the virus. If this thing does, if you look at, China, they really peaked at day 30 and have flattened out um, the number of infections. If that happens here, we're, we're around day 25, I think, as, as I'm sitting here. If that happens, I, I think you will, will definitely see a V-shaped recovery. And that's what most of the, most of the big investment banks are predicting at this point. Um, so that's my best guess, too. And uh, when should we be ready to buy? As far as, you know, multi, we'll say multifamily syndicators, uh, you know, in commercial space like that, when should we be ready? Well, if it's distressed, I would, I would buy now, you know, I mean, see what, and what's happening, even a lot of, a lot of the prices won't come down, but what's happening is a lot of people are feeling the money pressure. Mm. So a lot of these big, big guys that they lose money in the markets, they gotta, they gotta, they gotta have liquidity from somewhere. So deals evaporate. So you'll, you'll see funding for existing deals dry up. So this is your sellers may be seeing this. So if you're cash flush, you know, you, you, you're going to find softness in the space, even in really good deals. So I think the time is now. Um, I really do. And certainly for, for hotel spaces, I think, I think you're probably at the bottom right now, um, possibly in, uh, you know, entertainment and um, you know, hospitality space. You mentioned that that space changing, uh, you know, so much. What do you see happening in that space or, you know, in hospitality, uh, you know, say, you know, in the next, within the next year? Well, it's a great question, isn't it? I mean, I think people are discovering Zoom. I think people are discovering working from home and, right. you know, um, shopping for shirts and not pants, you know. Um, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, um, Will will the will office space changes? You, know, you look at WeWork and all this whole you know social working kind of thing. Is that going to change? I I don't know. It has a good chance of that. I think you'll see more and more people are getting comfortable sh doing their shopping on Amazon, getting getting groceries delivered because it's just it's a fundamental change in lifestyle. Even travel may become a little less appealing. So a lot of these things may may permanently change. Um, you know, like, like those things, uh, you know, yeah. So maybe people say, you know, I'll just work at home. I don't need to go and have my co work space. Um, and I'll, I, you know, for, for, you know, instead of going out to restaurants, I am going to just do the takeout thing and I have a, I have a better home theater than I've got a movie theater, you know? So we may see this trend change significantly. I just see people like almost being afraid 
being fearful to even be around one another. And I right. wonder how long that's going to last. Yeah. You know, well, yeah, I mean, I, you know, we'll, we're going to see this end at some point. I, I think, again, I'm, I'm hoping we'll, we're, we're seeing the, the turn in a few weeks, you know, mid-April time frame. That's what some of the big uh, research, medical research firms are saying. Um, and uh, so we'll, you know, it'll get back to normal. It'll get back to normal. But again, I'm, I'm more worried about the reprise. What happens if we see a, a return of this thing? This virus is not going to disappear until they get a, they get a vaccine for it. And uh, so how do you even, you know, so we need to really ramp up the testing and, and be aggressive. And when people are tested positive, they are quarantined. And uh, that's the only way to, to contain this. Otherwise, we're going to see part two of this which is kind of why I think we're going to, I think we're going to see, you know, the current stimulus package goes through April 30th, you know, um, in some parts would go out through June 30th. I think you're going to see more stimulus and Hey, it's an election year. You know, why not have more stimulus, right? <laughs> Who, whoever, whoever didn't get elected for, 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 you know, not having a stimulus. So, so, uh, you know, you, you went through the, the dot com era, you, you were able to raise 40 some million, 44 million, and then all of a sudden it was hard to raise 10 million. Well, you know, the, us that are, you know, going through that now, you know, how do we convince investors like, okay, you know, now's the time that we need to be uh, jumping in or need to be investing? And how did you do that then or advice for yeah. that? Well, you know, then, then I, I just I had to pivot, you know, into, sh you know, shifting because there was, there was no money for tech. No one wanted to talk tech. So at this point, you know, you've got a lot of stock market investors that, that are, they're, they're shell shocked. You know, if you've got some landlords who are, you know, real estate investors who are in, res in, re in retail or restaurants, you know, they're struggling and afraid. Um, so I think you've got to convince people that you have, you, you have a model that is more resilient than that. You know, and I think it's a good time for, you know, mobile homes or storage units or, or other, other kinds of kinds of real estate. You could have a real edge, you know, where you go, you know, we start marketing like crazy to people that are sick of the stock market. I mean, they went down what 30, 30% in 30 days. I mean, that's unprecedented. Yeah, or less. Unprecedented how fast that was. So if you're, if you're on, I mean, literally I got calls from people who said, you know, crying, you know, I've lost 300,000 in the stock market. My future is gone. You know, mm. didn't want to tell them, well, you probably made that 300,000 in the last year too. So, but you know, that's not the way people think. You right. Know? The future they had, they had a dreamed about over the last year or two, right? Their paper future, you know, but, yeah. but people are, people are shell shocked. So if you can convince them it's safe, you know, and um, you know, I, you know, our funds actually, we publish a uh, quarterly stock price for a share price for our funds and we allow redemptions at that price. So, you know, for me, I'm just going to put my share price next to the S&P 500 and say, which one did you rather own? You know, you know, I got liquidity too. And uh, by the way, we had no, you know, no share price, you know, uh, crashes. So show, show things like that to your investors. Where, where are you getting all your media from where all the, you know, where are you staying on top of all the current information? You know, the best financial source is wall street journal by, by far. They're the, they have real news. It's real journalism. It's unbiased. And uh, you know, they do it just a fantastic job. Whatever you do, don't turn on the TV and don't, don't read on Facebook. You know, it's secondhand, you know, it's like secondhand or thirdhand food. Just don't touch it. You know, get it straight from the source. <laughs> what well, what is this this economic turn right now uh, taught you, or anything that you know you didn't expect or didn't know about? You know how you've are, op, how you're operating your business. Well, you know the the you know having so me and my partner <clears throat> having gone through the you know he went through the SNL crisis in the '90s. Okay, I went through the dot com crisis in 2000. We both went, went through the, the, the last crisis and we, we got wiped out. Literally, we've been wiped out, I think, a, you know, a total of like six times. And so we're pretty sick of being wiped out and we're allergic to being wiped out. So what we did is we built a bulletproof model. Now, there's no such thing, right? I mean, if a nuclear bomb fell on me, you know, it's not going to be pretty, you know. So, but, but beyond that, you know, we've kind of, we've kind of done our homework and the, the fun thing for us at this stage is that, you know, it, it's working, right? Our models are very, very robust. <clears throat> we actually planned this out, you know? We're like, 
whatever happens when the next crash comes, we're not going to be the guys at the bottom of the pile, you know? And we got, that's why we went into notes. We got on the other side of the debt equation. And, and, uh, and so it's, so it's actually proving. So that's the thing. It's, it's, you know, it just shows, you know, you can learn a thing or two, you know, <laughs> you can, you know, don't waste a good lesson, right? Don't waste a good lesson. Learn a thing or two and make a change. Could you just uh, elaborate a little bit on the, the bulletproof model and, you know, you're into notes and, and why that's bulletproof now? Well, we, we began, so, you know, so in notes, okay, you know, the banks generally make out, okay, if, you know, if, if you lose money in your real estate deal, your bank probably didn't lose much money, if any, okay, <laughs> you know, that's the rule. So you want to be a lender, not a borrower, and the lenders put such protection in place, you know, they you indemnify them, they make money. It's, you know, heads I win, tails you lose, you know, yeah. kind of bank documents, you know, and you sign all that stuff. Well, that's the stuff that I have that people sign. And so I'm protected. Add add to the add to that equity cushions that, you know, you know, we're the we're the lenders, the borrower has equity in their home, you know, and so there's all these cushions on on top of me to protect us. And then we, 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 we're earning super high yields. We do that through, you know, very good underwriting and a very uh, inefficient product. Um, but uh, we, did very, we did very sophisticated underwriting and we actually did stress testing. So we stress, stress tested our models. What that means is put your assets on a spreadsheet and run the worst case scenario on it. Mm -hmm. You know, borrowers failing this, this, you know, these kind of things happening, uh, reduction in the prices. And we, you know, this was, we, we probably pull, pushed on this pretty hard two and a half years ago and we completely pivoted our model. We didn't completely pivot. We just began to focus on a different kind of assets, much safer assets, found that we could buy this stuff and still preserve our yields. Again, very inefficient pricing. So we were able to buy it at super good prices and continue to do that. And so we end up with a extremely safe portfolio that's extremely high yield. Yes, sounds too good to be true. Sorry. You know, but, you know, and so I'm not going to tell anybody how we do it, but actually we do. We tell everybody how we do it. But, you know, but anyhow, it's a, it's a, you know, we just, we just don't want, didn't want to get creamed again. And so, you know, we're still, uh, still, uh, you know, making those decisions and, and planning on these things happening. You know, no one expects the, this to happen, but I, I'm, I'm watching this market for, for 15 years, you know, or 12 years going up. I know what's coming. I know nothing goes up forever. Right. right. So you just got to plan it out. All right, Bob. Well, amazing update. And I'm grateful for your opinion and, and just your expertise as you're sharing it on the show. Anything else you want to leave the listeners with uh, about just the economy right now before we have to go? Cause we're right now out of time. Yeah. And perfect. You know, and, and I would just say, you know, to this is, this is, this is our finest hour, right? And, you know, JP Morgan made all of his money buying defaulted Russian government bonds, you know, in the teens. And literally the Russians said they're not going to pay these, these bonds. And he went and snapped them all up for pennies on the dollar. Who does that? Well, JP Morgan did. And then he, he, he lobbied the government to put pressure on Russia. And he ended up making a fortune on this. And, and he says the time to buy is when there's blood in the streets. Now, that sounds crude and crass, but he's making a point. You know, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. This is an opportunity, you know, now if you're on the wrong side of this, you know, I've been there, uh, dig out, but this is the time to look for opportunities. Hmm. Wow. Thank you so much, Bob. Tell the listeners how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you. Yes. Aspen funds, like Aspen, like the tree, F-U-N-D-S dot U-S. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.